Hello everybody, welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake, Chris is somewhere, yep, he's back there. Um, we are out here in the wood yard and it's kind of gray out. They're threatening some rainstorms coming in in a little bit. Believe it or not, it is February, what, 6th, 16th? 16th, yes. and it is 65 degrees out here in Connecticut. Um, pretty strange weather we're having. Um, but Chris and I are out here in the wood yard with a couple beers, because it's Thursday. Yes, Cheers. Sir. Cheers. Crack it open. And there's been something we've wanted to do regarding our pile of logs for a while now. And we have the materials to do it, we just haven't done it. Mostly because we don't know where we should do it. Let me show you what we got going on. So, walk with me, Chris. I'm walking. As you guys know, we built this pavilion shelter thing and we have our log pile here, which has been here since even really before the wood yard, you know, had all the asphalt millings and you know, all this good stuff. The main issue with the wood pile is what, Chris? Ground contact. The... We, well, yes, that's the biggest issue, but we have two big issues. What's the, what's the second? <laughs> what are the two biggest issues with our log pile? The <laughs> oldest wood is all the way in the back and we have no way of accessing it. Right. So, issue... No. I'd say that's, that's probably the number one issue. I'd say that's the number one issue because the ground contact is related to not being able to access the wood. Right. So, guys, when we get new logs in, you've probably seen, or you know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, but if not, you know, I, I, I stack the pile you know, this way coming out. And at times it's been all the way out to, to this road that goes up the hill here. And because of that, and because of the amount of wood that I bring back, we're always splitting the most recently brought back wood and we never have time to get through the whole pile in order to get to some of this beautiful ash that's back here. I mean, like this stuff has big cracks in it. As you could see, this stuff is dry 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 we got some hickory back there um you know he's if we wait much longer on the stuff in the back it might just split itself right if we wait much longer it might split itself or start rotting which yeah. is problem number two that these are all on the ground and obviously being on the ground they absorb absorb moisture more prone to rotting this that the other thing so when we built the shelter, I brought home two extra telephone poles, or it just so happened that we ended up with two extra telephone poles. They're about, what, like 20 foot long, probably? Yeah. Probably. It looks about 20 foot long. Um, which would be able to, you know, we'd be able to use them as stringers. We wouldn't have to sacrifice any of our logs. They're all pressure treated, you know, creosote or, you know, whatever chemicals they put in them. So they, it would take a long time for them to rot. Um, so they'd make great stringers. So we want to move potentially move our log pile to an area that we could access from both sides. That way we could pull off the log pile from one side, being the oldest stuff, and you know keep replenishing it from the opposite side. Um, and where we are here, we just simply can't, we, we can't drive the tractor like through the woods and it, you know, it'd be a whole ordeal. So Chris came up with a really good idea. I'm gonna pass the camera over to him and he's gonna explain. So my idea is, Right over here where we got all of our totes that are sitting and waiting to be sold so patiently. Um, you know, we, we have this whole run that goes all the way out to the main driveway. Let's move these totes. Because it, it's plenty wide. And as of right now, we leave it open to be able to drive past this maple tree, which I want to take down anyway. But all this, it's kind of wasted space that we don't really use because when we back the trailer in, we back it in over here. And if these totes weren't here, but instead leapfrog down to the end or simply where the log pile currently is, we would be able to put our log pile here basically from this maple tree up to this little hickory right here and we would have all this width for the width you know of the log with our telephone pole stringers running this way 
and then we can come in from one side, come in from the other side, and load and offload, and we would get a little bit more usage out of kind of this dead space. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where the totes sit because they're just sitting there waiting to either be seasoned or, you know, or, or for delivery. So if they sit there or if they sit here, it doesn't matter. But if we can solve a problem that we have with the location of our log pile, now that the shelter and we've established where we do our splitting, then I think it would make sense to just move the totes rather than keep suffering the consequences of poor location of a log pile. The other thing that moving the log pile to this location allows us to do is handle the wood only one time. So if we were to potentially leave the log pile in that location, we have to move the entire log pile, put the stringers down, and put all those same logs right back. Right. Which Whereas, would only be solving one of our problems. Right. So if we're going to be touching them once, we might as well kill two birds with one stone and fix both of our problems. But in, in one afternoon. Right, in one, well, we really need two tractors right now to, we to, do. to double up the speed, but we don't have that. So we have two sets of power force, well, two and a half. But <laughs> one and a half. You'll see that in another, <laughs> one and a half. Yeah, well, you'll see that in another video. Um, all right, so let's take some quick measurements off camera, make sure this is all gonna work, and then we'll go from there. All right, pitter patter. All right, guys, Chris and I just did some talking off camera. We basically think if we move from this tote down to these two totes, all of these, I believe that's 17 totes Chris counted out, that would give us ample room to have the log pile here with room to access on both sides with the tractor because our telephone poles, as you can see, I think this one's like 18 and the other one might be like 20. Um, so that would give us a decent span to run the log pile. And we're gonna leapfrog all these totes down to here. Um, these couple where you see the big gaps, those are all oak totes that weren't ready this past season, but they'll be ready by next year. So I'm gonna move all those up closer, compress the pile, and if you've really been following along and paying attention, I kinda use these trees as markers as far as chronological order. So um, everything from, well, that double stem white oak going this way is in chronological order. So that stuff's the newest. This stuff is the oldest. And then from that white oak going that way, again, is in chronological order the opposite way with this stuff being the oldest and that stuff down by the big rock down there being the newest. So we're gonna fill in the gaps and uh, that's kind of the plan. Hopefully it works. Yeah. We've always talked about stacking totes. This is the first time we're actually gonna try this. Seems to be lifting up a full toe to ash just fine. It's on there. We'll have to go to the pilot and see what he thinks. That's a small toe to ash. But as you guys know, we mostly split ash. So I think we may have just found a way to like double our storage space. <laughs> well, not double, because they're not all small toes. But we'll take a look at the back side of this. Oh, see, it's sitting on the wood. Yeah. So we would almost have to push those pieces back. Push them back or not stack as high? Not stack as high, right. All right, here we go again. 
took that front row out of there. Set this back on top and see if that is what keeps this nice and steady slash level. It looks like it might just do it. A little bit better. This tote is bent, a little bit bent yeah. so that might be what's holding us up on this side. But it looks like it'll do it. There. I mean, if we're gonna do this regularly, I'd say we probably have to alter the way that we stack these and you know stack it flush and some. I'm gonna change it, but I mean, I've never tried stacking like for storage purposes coats on top of each other that were full. So, interesting. Now, don't go too high in there because then you're not gonna get your fork in. Oh, yeah, that's right. See, so this is. So, what, how many pieces do we, you know, quote unquote, short them? There, so what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen pieces. I don't think thirteen pieces is all that bad. I don't think it's the end of the world. Okay, you live and you learn. This is something new. I don't, I don't know if it's a practice well done. What do you guys think? Should we stack the totes? I mean, by the time you guys see this video, it's probably gonna be in like two weeks, but. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should we stack the totes to maximize our space? Or do you think it's just not worth the time? It's better to just, you know. Because right now we have enough space for all of the totes that we have. We're gonna be getting more soon as they start making mulch. But if we start putting freshly split wood on top of four month old wood, you know, you're gonna want the stuff on the bottom before you want the top. Let me know in the comments. Okay guys, all the totes have been moved. Chris blew the leaves out with the little blower and we got the first telephone pole here on the forks. Um, that worked out pretty well. We decided not to stack them just for ease and that way, you know, it's not as noticeable, you know, from the road and for my neighbor over there. Um, but it looks like a lot more wood because we have to single stack them. The, the road isn't wide enough down there to do like two rows only up to that tree. But anyway, um, now we have to decide where to put this thing. And I'm thinking about in this area, maybe a little bit more this way. Now, one thing while I was moving the totes around, shuffling them around that I thought about that I would mention is that obviously we're not getting log truck loads of logs from loggers. We do tree work, so we are limited in the length of the logs that we can bring back based on the surroundings, you know? So sometimes you have to take a little three footer because there's power lines. Other times you could take a five footer and then other times, you know, the, the stick, when you drop the stick, it could be a 20 footer and we're subject to the length of the 14 foot dump trailer. So I think we're gonna have to put the longer logs on the bottom and space out the stringers, AKA the telephone poles, to be a little bit wider than the width of the tractor to maximize the amount of logs we can have on the bottom, you know, layer. Obviously we can stack shorter logs on top of those longer ones, but um, that's something we have to keep in mind.
Okay guys, we got one log on here. And as you can see, it is barely on there. And we have these things six feet apart. We moved all of these logs, which are not six feet. And looking at this pile, it's hard to tell when you're standing over by the splitter, just looking at it from the end, a good majority of these logs aren't six feet. I in fact have just double stacked, as you can see, logs to give the appearance that they were longer than they actually are. So who knows how many are actually to full six foot. And what Chris just said is that a lot of the time, like I said before, we don't have a choice. Yeah. Because we're taking down the tree and it's over somebody's house and we're limited with space or we have to get it through a gate or we have to get it past a shed or something like that. So. The reason we were kind of doing this is because recently we took down a bunch of just bean pole, really tall, straight ash trees, and we're preparing to bring them back here. And they're all long. We probably cut them to like 14 foot or longer. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to put all those because they're green. It's like green ash, not the species, but it, it's, yeah. it's, it's alive. They, yeah. they were actually living ash trees. Um, that we cut down and we didn't want to put them in front of all of this stuff because this stuff is just as good and it's been sitting there you know for a year and a half two years and we want to get to it so what we're thinking now is instead of deconstructing this entire pile like we've already begun to do because let me preface that we should have said this at the beginning of the video we thought about this for how long maybe I don't know 45 for, minutes at the end of the day. Oh, I was going to say, like, we actually talked about it seriously for, like, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of doing this on a whim, as we do most things here, thinking that it would help production. But I think this might just be a good solution to stage the, these new logs until we're able to get through this stuff. I don't know. I think we're definitely going to chalk this one up as a loss. Um not a total loss. Not a, not a total loss, but, I, I think you know. As we continue to deconstruct the pile. I like this. He's always looking at the bright side of things. <laughs> as we continue to deconstruct the pile, we can move those long poles over there, focus on the short stuff, continue to bring home long, fresh, green wood. Right, when we're able to. When we're able to. And in, in the meantime, we're just going to have to deal with what we got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got short wood, you know. Yeah. What, what can we say? I think it's a... <laughs> life's issues yeah you know what well, yeah. i think they sell a product for that I, I don't know but i guess another um positive is that we got all the totes organized in chronological or you know by date order um so we've made room out in here to maneuver at the very least if this whole thing works great if not such as life um but it's getting dark it's raining Chris's dogs are being... Sammy's throwing an absolute hissy fit. Yeah, today. she does not want to be out here in the rain. <laughs> um, so we're going to end this one here, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We always appreciate your feedback. We're probably going to get a bunch of really constructive... Really awesome feedback. Yeah, this, awesome feedback. This, you, you, don't, you don't typically see a day where it goes wrong with us. you know. But... Well, I mean, we make mistakes, but... This was kind of, maybe yeah. we should have given this one a little bit more thought. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that our wood was so short? Um, anyway, that's going to wrap it up. So as always, guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Consider hitting that subscribe button down below. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Any questions, comments, or feedback on our situation here, uh, drop it down in the comments section. We need it, so don't be bashful. Yeah, don't just, you know, let her rip, Tater on. Chip. Um, so <laughs> for now, I'm Jake and I'm Chris. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.